I'm just a bird with a melody to sing. I'm hardly heard. I get these tiny little.
Hi guys, and welcome to yet another episode on the JesusGirl.ent podcast. My name is Shaniqua Robinson, and I will be your host. And so I am so excited to be back with you guys. Um, we are in a new season entitled Good Deeds. And so this season is going to highlight organizations and individuals that stepped out on faith for the greater good, not necessarily for something to benefit themselves, but to benefit our community, to benefit the community at large, this world and those who are impacted by some of the, the different things that happen in life. And so I'm very excited to be in this season because we hear a lot of bad news and different things of that nature, but there are still some very, very good things that are taking place. And as a believer, we know that we are carriers of and believers of the good news and the good news is he came he lived he died he rose and he is coming back again that is the gospel of jesus christ and that is the good news and so today i wasn't able to get on on friday um as i anticipated but for this soul full soul fair soul full soul care sunday what i'll do is i sum up what i was going to talk about for freedom friday and we're going to talk about the good samaritan and so um that passage of scripture that parable can be found in luke chapter 10 verses 25 through 37 so at your own leisure go and read it the entire chapter is good the entire book is good so just read as much as you can get as much in as you can um as possible but just a few things that stuck out um in that takes that were just very very um applicable to everyday life is that anything can happen to anyone sometimes we look at people and we see that certain situation and we, and we may automatically assume that's the thing assume they put themselves in this situation or it must have been something of their own fault or their own cause but when you look at the parable of the good samaritan the man that was kind of like the, the the object in the text that was being used as an example um as to when the, the lawyer asked the question of jesus christ who was my neighbor and he gave the he responded with the parable um the man he had fe fell amongst thieves on a journey he was um he was journeying and um he was robbed and he was stripped of his raiment and so you can just visualize that how that may have looked like maybe like an every um everyday beggars maybe somebody that you may see that um appears to be homeless or what have you but he is it wasn't of his own fault it was something that happened to him and so even looking at this looking at this text it caused me to do a self-evaluation for my own self and to not pre not prejudge someone's situation based upon what i see exterior uh, see 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 in their exterior because just looking at someone if they're like having like in down in the dumps of life they're not really doing well you never know what got them there and so the thing that I love about God is that God doesn't just know the what he knows the why. So you may see somebody in a bad position. You may see somebody in an unfortunate situation and people can come up with all different kinds of assumptions and bring all of these different things together and try to formulate a reason for why this person is experiencing this or why this person is in this position. But only God truly knows why. The other things that I love about that text is that, that that was the first one just to see that just because he was in a bad situation, it wasn't something he caused himself. It was something that happened to him. Life can happen to anyone. And we're just, you know, by grace of God and prayers of faith, um, just one miracle away from a disaster. And so I just bless God that he just keeps on keeping us and that he's in the blessing business. In addition to that, you see three different kinds of people. And so that could have helped the individual, but they just decided not to. To. And so many of us may fall in one of these categories or may even fall in all of these categories, depending on what stage of life we were caught in. But the first one is a priest. So this is a person that's thought to be a person of God, you know, man of God, um, having that title, that um, position and um, that prestige that sees the man. And when he sees him, as soon as he sees him, he goes on the other side. Now, I'm glad we're in this season talking about good deeds because this would have been a great opportunity for him to exemplify everything that he he was teaching, preaching, believing within the church house, within the house of God, outside of the temple. But what he did is what many people do. We may, we, we, we love to embrace people that are doing well, but when you see somebody that's kind of not doing as well, we try to avoid the situation and act as if we don't really even know what's going on. And so, and, th and that'll be our excuse. So when people ask you like, Hey, why didn't you help that person? Or, Hey, um, did you know, you know, X, Y, and Z, or da, 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 you know, a lot of people would like to come up with the great this is the, the 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 best explanation of why i didn't help quote unquote i did not know um and so that's what he kind of does he goes on to the other side it's none of my concern it's not something i have to deal with it's none of my business you know and he goes on about his way so that 
And so that's one example of a kind of person where you can see that there's a need that needs to be met and you may be in a position to meet that need, but instead of meeting the need, you kind of like avoid it and the person. You avoid the person and you avoid the need so that you can, you know, just continue on your merry way and just continue doing what it is that you desire to do for yourself and for your loved ones. Um, The second example of a person we see is a Levite. Now, the Levitical priests, they had a very, very high, um, even if you look back at the meaning of the name Levi that comes from the tribe of Levi, that Levi worked wherein the Levites are descendants of, his name means attached. Levi's name was attached. And Leah named him that for a completely different reason. She wanted to be joined unto her husband. And that's why she named him Levi, meaning to be attached. Um, but God took that meaning and he changed it. He He took that 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 birth of that child and he he used the Levites, the tribe of the Levites, um, to be able to keep not only um, to keep that attachment between God and man, between God and his creation. And so they were the Levitical priests. They were responsible for um, working the altar and then doing different services, not just within the temple, um, the house of God, but they were also responsible unto the people. And so this gave the Levite an op- uh, uh, awesome opportunity um, to be able to help this individual um, and to present the love of God outside of the temple yet again. Um, but sometimes we can get so rigid in our assignments where I'm just a praise and worship leader. I'm just a choir director. I'm just a praise dancer. I'm just a worker within the house of God. We forget to use that same and exemplify that same love and those same services outside of the church. Now, it wouldn't have been effective for him to just walk up to the man and start singing of course but he could at least you know try to figure out what was going on now the thing that that points out about this levi is that he came to look on them but then he went off into the other way and so with that's why we in this topic of good deeds because good deeds really goes goes deep into having a good heart because you can do something and not really have your heart in it you can give something and not really have your heart in it um just to do it out of routine just to do it because i felt like since that was the right thing to do but this levi we see does neither he comes to gather information versus like he comes to see you know what's going on with them and he he figures out oh he, he's been hurt he's been injured but then i'm not going to do anything about it and what this kind of puts me in the mind of is when people they kind of like call or they may try to like stop by i'm just checking on you is just trying to check in and see how you were doing but they know they don't have any intention to really help you and so um being a good person and having just the heart of god um just going back to why jesus is even talking about this parable is knowing that i don't have to know all the details to be able to help you I don't have to. So firstly, with the priest position, I don't have to have prestige to be able to help you. Secondly, I don't have to have a position to be able to help you with this Levite. And and, and, and then following that, I'm just going to put two, two A, like, you know how you would do bullet points. I don't have to know all of the details to be able to help you. Despite whatever got you into this position, what's clear and what's evident is that you need some help. And so that's why I I thank God that he put upon my heart to highlight those who have taken that step to to help and help without strings attached. The Levite, (laughs) whose name Levi initially means attached. And then with helping, he could have helped them and then had strings attached to it. Well, you know, you got to do this X, Y, and Z. You got to do A, B, and C because I helped you. And so we don't want to do that to people. If you're going to help them, help them and leave the rest up to God help without any intention any thought in mind any oh you're gonna pay me back knowing that my help comes from the Lord I'm looking unto the heels from whence coming my help because all of my help comes from the Lord and so thirdly we have the good Samaritan now the reason that this is hard for people to really even be able to grasp because the Samaritan was the Samaritan people were looked down on by the Jews because they were a mixed breed they were not just fully Jewish um, descendants they had Jewish as well as Gentile blood and so they were considered some people called them dogs some people called them like negative names Um, some people avoided even walking through Samaria so they walk all the way around because they didn't want to be involved with them but isn't it something how God can use somebody that don't nobody else want to use that don't nobody else want to be bothered with that don't nobody even consider to be worthy for his greater good because they have the heart and the compassion and the willingness to do it now what this good Samaritan does is that when he sees the need he automatically does something about it I want to read the text to tell you exactly what he does And we're starting at verse 33. 
But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, the man that was injured. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And went to that's what the, I, I wanted to really skate past that, but I really came because that's what the world is missing right now is compassion. But the Bible does tell us that in the last days, the hearts of men will wax cold. And so and I'm more concerned about washing my car than I am about going to see about somebody else's need. I'm more concerned about getting the latest shoe and the latest purse than I am concerned about somebody else that's struggling or that is in poverty or that um, may be even on their last leg. Now, the thing I did not say earlier, but if you read the text, you can see is that this man, not only was he on the side of the road, um, stripped of his clothing and robbed, but the Bible says that he was left half dead. So he was in a he was in a position of rather him stand there for an extended period of time could have been, you know, a matter of life and death. Now, research does tell us that this was a, you know, this was something that was common that happened on that journey that he was um, that road that he was journeying um, from Jerusalem to Jericho. That it was a lot of different robberies and things that took place. And if you can kind of just think about impoverished um, areas and, you know, how sometimes they are more likely to have like crime and different things like that. So they did have crime that took place all the time there. But this was an opportunity for somebody to intervene and really help. And the Samaritan was the one who did it. So let me continue reading what he did. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him and went to him and bound up his wounds. He didn't go to him asking him, you know, what did you do? How did you get in this position? You had to do something. That's the last thing that somebody wants to hear when they're receiving help. Of course, you know, if you're an organization, you have to do some type of background study and different things like that in order to enroll this person. But when a person's already in a bad position, just imagine if you go to the hospital and you're already feeling terrible. The first thing that is like the first thing that should be on the mind of the person that's providing me is help. First of all, get me out of this situation so that I can be able to, to, to completely tell you what needs to be said. And so what he does is he binds up his wounds. So he's he's cleaning up, making sure that he's he's healing. He's going to be able to heal properly. He pours oil and wine on him and then he puts him on his beast and brought him to an end. So he takes responsibility for him. Like even though he did, he he the Bible doesn't declare whether or not he saw the priest and the Levi pass by, but rather they he saw them pass by or not. He took it upon himself like rather anybody chose to help you or not. I'm going to help you. And sometimes you got to ask yourself that because sometimes people will prepare prevent from helping somebody based upon who they say should have helped them oh why didn't such and such help them why didn't you know that person help them but god may very well want to use you to help that person he wants to use your heart your, your compassion your ability and look at what's gonna happen here and he took him to the end and he took care of him and on the morrow when he departed he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him take care of him and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. And so when I first read this, and I know I don't have much time, I thought maybe the man had a lot of money. But what God ministered to me about it is that he didn't have it. Maybe he did not. It's not even about the case of him having a lot of money. He had a lot of heart because there's some people that got the money that don't have a heart. And so for those who are listening in, God is getting ready to deposit a lot into you. But the reason that he's getting ready to give it to you is because of the condition of your heart. Because he knows that when he blesses you with it, it's not just going to be kept for yourself. It's not just going to be kept, you know, to take care of your family and that it, that's it. But he knows that you're going to use the resources. You're going to use the finances to be able to help others. That is what we're called to do. That is why we're here. And when Jesus finished his parable, he asked the lawyer. Now he's asking him a question. Which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And the lawyer responded, he that showed mercy on him. Then said Jesus unto him, go and do thou likewise. And so that is what God has called us to do, to be a blessing to other people, to for him to bless us so that we can be a blessing. And so that's the gist of the message on tonight. Don't be like the priest where you got the power, you got the prestige, but you don't care. You got other concerns, other things you got to do. Don't be like the Levite where you're nosy enough to get the information, but you don't have enough compassion to do something about it. 
But be like the good Samaritan, that though people may be looking over you, though they may be looking down on you, you don't allow that to impact the way that you care for other people. Because those are the kind of people that God is raising up and those are the kind of people that God wants to use. And so I just pray that you all have an awesome and amazing day. Go into this week being good. Keep your hearts pure and know that God is in the blessing business and he has you in mind. Talk to you all soon. I love you and know that Jesus loves you more.
Nothing like your presence, oh God. Oh, oh, oh. 